dear There is a healer His love is deeper than sea His mercy isn't failing His arms a fortress for the weak That fade arise Let fade arise I lift my hands to believe again You are my refuge, you are my strength As I pour out my heart These things I remember You are faithful God forever Be still, there is a river that flows from Calvary's tree. A fountain for the thirsty, pure grace that washes over me. Let feed arise. As I pour out my heart, these things I remember. You are faithful, God, forever. And I lift my hands to believe again. You are my refuge, you are my strength. As I pour out my heart, these things. I remember you are faithful God forever so let fate arise let fate arise and open my eyes and open my eyes let fate arise let fate arise oh, open my As I pour out my heart, these things I remember. You are faithful, God, forever. And I lift my hands to believe again. You are my refuge, you are my strength. As I pour out my heart, these things. I remember you are faithful God, oh faithful God forever. As you are faithful, so let faith arise. So let faith arise. Welcome to Henderson General Baptist Church. Uh, as we get started this morning uh, in worship of Him, may our faith arise. 
May we know that fear and doubt is a real deal and it is tough to overcome that. But we know the one who has overcome this world and his name is Jesus and he loves us. And in this moment as we prepare to, to worship him in spirit and in truth and, and I'm coming to you in, in this online service for those who have joined in here. I want you to know that I'm praying for each and every one of you. Oftentimes I never see your name or I don't even know that you're on here but I'm praying for you. For if you don't leave a comment or, 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 or a like or a, a love, then I don't see that you're on here. I don't see those, that information. But God does. God knows that, he, that you do. And here's what I want you to think about. I want you to think about this word complacency. It's a problem that we have in our modern day, modern day world and in our culture that we live that for some, you may not even know what this word means, but I'm going to define it for you, and we're going to look at an important scripture. I want to thank those who continue to share uh, or, or faithfully give uh, to the church for God's tithe and our offering. Uh, it is important that we continue to follow after the one who is faithful and to continue to do the things that he has called us to do, to live out that life every single day. Not to become complacent, uh, to not get to the place that we think that we don't need to do something. We're going to talk about a person in the Bible that's pretty important and they don't even have a name. But God knows who they are and God knows you. He knows the circumstance and the situation. He knows the struggle that you face. He knows the doubt you have. He knows the worries and the burdens that you carry. and He wants to deliver you from that. But He also wants you to live a life that is fulfilled in Him and doing the things that bring Him honor and glory and others good. So as we prepare ourselves for worship, I pray that, that you will continue to join us on Wednesdays from this last Wednesday uh, we, we talked about Psalm chapter 119, verses 1 through 32. This next Wednesday, we're going to pick up with verse 33 uh, and go to around 72 or so. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to learn more about God's Word and what it can mean for us and how we utilize it on a daily basis. I highly encourage you to join us. If you missed last Wednesday, get on there, find it. It's on the YouTube page. It's on the Facebook page. Uh, and, 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 and those things are there for us to continue to grow and learn and to be together with one another. If you didn't put a comment on last Wednesdays and you watched it and, uh, and you haven't figured out which verse is the one talking to you, I encourage you, go back and and put a comment on. Let us have a little conversation with it or at least let me pray for you about that verse. Whether it's out loud where you can hear it or not, it's okay. Know that I'm praying for you. So if we could, let us take a moment to just worship Him this morning in spirit and in truth. Psalm 100 declares, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. He says, Enter His gates with thanksgiving, into His courts with praise. For the Lord is good and His love endures forever and His faithfulness continues through all generations. Lord, the God of all salvation, we come before You. We want to enter Your gates with thanksgiving, Lord God, into Your courts with praise. And we worship You, Lord, not just only because of all that you have done for us. I worship you for who you are. You are our God. Lord, meet us today. Be with us, Lord God, and may your manifest presence be upon us. 
and minister upon our hearts. In Christ's name, amen. Let us sing to the Lord. Standing here in your presence Thinking all the good things you have done Waiting here patiently Just to hear the still small voice again Holy, righteous, faithful till the Savior, healer, redeemer, and friend, I will worship you for who you are. I will worship you for who you are. I will worship you for who you are. Jesus. Yeah. Just to rest upon His 
promise just to know the said the Lord Jesus Jesus how I trust him and now I proved him more Jesus Jesus who pray Trust him more. And I'm so glad I learned to trust him, precious Jesus, save your friend. faith, Lord, we trust you, and we worship you, Lord God. We bring back all the glory and honor, adoration, and praise to you alone, you alone. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. What an amazing song. To think about looking for the whisper and hear that small voice of God and then to think that we get to trust Jesus and how sweet it is. The struggle that I have, if that's the right word to use, is that sometimes I wonder how much have I proved him or and or. It's about continuing to trust him. And the fact is, is that he's trusted you. Yep. See, when Jesus left heaven, he left heaven, he left her uh, to come down on this earth and he walked on this earth. And then he says, I'm getting ready to go back. But the ministry you're about to do, you're doing in my place. And the question is, are we doing it? Are you living out the life and utilizing the gifts God's called you to? Or have you become complacent in your walk with God? See, as we look at this month, there's five Sundays in this month. And last Sunday, we talked about comfort. This Sunday, we're talking about complacency. And what happens is, is when we live in the wrong comfort, we end up coming to the place of living in complacency. And once we get to complacency, we move to apathy. And man, oh man, once we get to apathy... As Christians, we're in deep, deep, deep trouble. So this is an important message for you. It's an important message for me. It's an important message for our church. It's an important message for our generation in which we live right now of saying, how am I going to treat the living word of God? I read this verse and we're going to read uh, more out of this chapter, Matthew chapter 25. But I skip down to verse 25. And I don't want to give anything away if you're new to the Bible. But 
I'm going to give it away. I want to read this before I show you some pictures and talk about the word complacency because ultimately I want you to see as we move through this uh, and, and we go through this, this in, uh, part of this chapter in chapter 25 of Matthew that this word complacency is important because if we're not careful, we live in that life of complacency and we don't even know it. We don't even know that we've moved there, that it's okay, that we, that we justify, we say what is right or wrong, and we go ahead and make it okay in our minds. That God has entrusted us with something. It's very important for you to know God's entrusted you with something. And it is unique to you. Yep. Go ahead. Look in a mirror, point to yourself where you can see your finger and say, God has a purpose and a plan for me. Say it to yourself. I know you don't want to and you think, well, I'm here by myself or I don't want to do it because my family's sitting here. Go ahead, say it. God has a purpose and a plan for you. Yes, you. And what happens is, is the gifts and the talents that he gives us, we become complacent with it. We get comfortable in our own skin and we no longer use it. And the Bible says in Matthew chapter 25, verse 25, I was afraid I would lose your money. So I hid it in the earth. Look, here is your money back. Lord, I pray and I ask that as we go through this, this morning, there's a lot of us that have hidden, not money, but our treasures, our talent, our gifts, because we're afraid. And Lord, we've gotten to the point that we think it's okay. We've become complacent. Lord, I pray that as I talk about this word complacency and I show uh, a few pictures and I give actual definitions that anyone can find. And then, Lord, we further look at what this scripture says and what it means for us. I pray, Lord, that we are, have our eyes open. that We realize our need for you, our need to trust you, our need to hear your still, small voice, to hear that whisper. Lord, I pray that this word that we're about to look at would impact our lives in a way that it would awaken us, revive us, renew us to do something marvelous and great with the gifts and the talents and the treasures you have given us. And the responsibility and the privilege of serving you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I put this picture up. I found this picture. See, I kept looking. I, I wanted a picture for uh, complacency. And, and what I realized was, was it was really, really tough to find one. So I found this picture and, and actually I didn't even look up a name. I just opened up my, my app where I get pictures from and, and I saw this picture. And I thought, there's a picture of complete. I don't know this guy. I don't know what he was thinking. I don't know anything about his character. All I know is he's got this, this uh, fruit punch soda, natural flavored soda. I never know where they come up with these natural flavors and what natural flavor actually means. But you look at him and you could look and say, well, he's happy, he's excited, he sees something on the other side of the room. But for me, when I see this picture and I saw this image, it just sprung out to me complacency. Complacency. We all, if we're honest with ourselves and look into the mirror and, and, and ask ourselves the question, am I doing all that God has called me to do or have I become comfortable in what this world has to offer and I've become complacent, not understanding that one day Jesus is going to return? 
So I give you three definitions for complacency. And as I think about this guy, I really wonder what the picture was actually meant for, what he was actually doing, what, what they were trying to do. But for me, I'm telling you, this is the greatest image I, I've come up with in a long, long time. Just that look on his face. And, you know, I love his haircut. His haircut is really, really good, too. Uh, I'll give him that for certain. But complacency, one definition goes self-satisfaction, especially when accompanied by unawareness of actual dangers or deficiencies. I want you to think about this word complacency. And I go back to the verse that I originally read. I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look, here is your money back. He is excited that he gives that money back, and that's it. He acts as if he was afraid of what the master is going to do, and we're going to read more. I'm just wanting you to get this image in your head of what is happening with this guy. He's excited about what it is that is in front of him. Complacency has come in and swooped into his life that he comes to the place of he is self-satisfied. And he's unaware of the actual dangers because, see, he says, I was afraid. I was afraid, but he was actually unaware of the real dangers. He was unaware of the deficiencies in his own life because he thought he had done something good. Looky, looky, looky what I've got, what I did. I took and I hid this money. I, I hid it in the ground so when you came back, I could give it back to you. Another definition goes this way about complacency. An instance of usually unaware or uninformed self-satisfaction. Oh, I love this picture because I, I see this guy in that look like, mm -hmm, yeah, I'm drinking my fruit punch and all is well. This is the life. It's an instance of unaware, uninformed self-satisfaction. This self-satisfaction comes back in. So I go back to the verse again. I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look! Do you see that word, look? It's the satisfaction of, I got your money. Here it is. Here it is. Take it back. I got it. He's satisfied. See, normally we look at that word afraid and we go, well, yeah, I was afraid, so don't lose it. Don't lose what, I, I'm afraid of what is going to happen. But what we don't realize is, is what's going to happen if we don't use it. See, that's an important question to ask yourself. What happens if I don't? And oftentimes that's exactly what we do, is that we don't. What do I mean? Let's move on. The, the next definition or the last definition before we read more of chapter 25, it reads this, a feeling of smug or uncritical satisfaction with oneself or one's achievements. This person and this moment right here says, I was afraid, so I hid this stuff in the earth, this money. Look! Unaware satisfaction that the reality was he actually did the wrong thing. You ever done the wrong thing thinking you were doing the right thing and when you found out that it was actually the wrong thing, you was in trouble and it was too late. 
For this person, it was too late in the smugness and the awareness of what he was doing, this, this satisfaction of hiding the money in the earth was so satisfying because he knew when the master returned, he could just give it back. See, there's too many Christians today that are living a complacency lifestyle. Whether it's their money, the gifts, the talents, the treasures. See, according to which translation you use, there are some that will say that these are talents. And, and what I want you to see is that it's more than just dollars, bills, and coins that, that we're talking about here. But God has entrusted you with something. And, and God wants to do something marvelous and wonderful through your life. But so many of us are living this life of saying, no, I don't need to. And we're living complacently. This smug arrogance that when Jesus returns, all will be well then. He loves me and he died for me and all is going to be okay. I don't need to do anything. I've got it all figured out. But if that's the life you're living and you're hiding it, then you better beware. The real danger, feeling this smugness and this satisfaction of one's achievement, and understanding that they are usually unaware and uninformed self-satisfaction leads to what? There's an actual danger or deficiency in your life. There's nothing worse in our life than to be complacent and think that I got it all figured out and if everybody was more like me, the world would be better when in fact we don't need more people like me. They don't need more people like you. We need more people like Jesus. And Jesus has engrafted in, in, in you into the, the family of God. He's adopted you into his family. He left heaven to come down on this earth and to walk on this earth. And he lived a sinless life. And he died a death, a sinner's death, to take your place, to take my place. And, and he was buried in that grave. And three days later, he arose. And, and then we know that he ended up ascending up into the heaven. And he's at the, hand, the right hand of the Father right now. And there's coming a moment that he's going to return yep the master is going to return and what is he going to find with your name there well done complacent lost sinner we get to make that choice today we get to choose the path that we're on in the discipleship call for your life. I know I'm skipping ahead and I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it is mighty important for you this week to accept the discipleship call. See, here's what the scripture says, thinking about this word complacency. One more time, I want to put it up there and remind you that we get to make a choice and how we're going to use the gifts, the talents, the treasures that God has given us. What are we going to do with them? How are we going to utilize them? Or are we going to be like this guy right here where it says, I was afraid I would lose your money. I was afraid I would do something wrong with it. I was afraid that it would, I would have nothing when you showed back. I was afraid that I would not do the right thing. So this afraidness led him to just go hide it. And he was so excited to give him back what he was originally given in the first place. No development, no growth, nothing new. He just simply took a package that was handed to him and he gave it back. Complacency is a serious serious problem in our church world today. See, here's the full story. Again, the kingdom of God can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. He entrusted it. 
That's an important word, and I don't want you to overlook it. He trusted these people with his money, with the gifts, with the talents, with the treasures. I want you to keep utilizing these words because I don't want it to be that you think I'm talking about tithes and offering, though it can be because oftentimes we become complacent in our tithes and offerings because ultimately we think, no, everything's fine. God wants me to take care of all this other stuff first and God wants me to do this first and God wants me to be indebted to the credit card first, not to give him. That's not what this message is about. Although if that's what you're doing, Again, the kingdom of God can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. Where did Jesus go? Jesus has gone to heaven. One day he's going to return. And we're going to be found in one of two motions, in one of two states of our life. He called together his servants and he entrusted his money to them while he was gone. He entrusted this gift, this ministry, the, the talents and the treasures that you have. He entrusted you. He entrusted me to do the things we are called to do and to, to go out and, and see the kingdom continue to expand and to expand. But here's what happened. He gave five bags of silver to one. Two bags of silver to another. And one bag of silver to the last. Dividing it in proportion to their abilities, he then left on his trip. See, Jesus is given this illustration, this, this account, this uh, story of this man. And as he is in heaven, he's going to come back one day. And with that, he gave five bags to one and he gave two bags to another and one bag to a third. And what happens in our life is we sit around comparing, hey, I wish I had their singing voice. I wish I had their musical talent. I mean, I'll admit to you, I tell Evan every once in a while, man. You got the hair, you got the looks, you got the musical talent, you got the singing ability. Man, I wish I had what you have. And the reality is, is for some of us, we don't have that. And we sit around worrying about, he's got five bags of silver. God, you gave five bags of talent to Evan. You gave me one, one bag. And what do we end up doing? We end up in the comparison, comparison trap. And this comparison trap is, is, a, is a, a slippery slope to where the next thing you know, we get so bogged down with what other people have that we end up doing nothing with what we do have. He goes on after he has left on this trip. And it says, The servant who received the five bags of silver began to invest the money and earn five more. See, what I realize about Evan, and, and I bring it up about his music and his, and his guitar playing and all that, he doesn't just sit down in front of the camera all of a sudden and just record it and go with it he practices it he he looks at it he he works on his craft he he sings the song and and he and he learns and he and he tries to bring it to where now it's bringing us into worship it's not just about him him just showing up and doing it it's much like me these scriptures don't just show up on the screen haphazardly it's something that i've studied i've prepared for God has given me the talent and the treasure and the responsibility, the gift, the calling on my life to preach the gospel message, the good news of Jesus Christ. And I realized that, that here this one is, he took these five gifts, these, these five bags, and he, and he went and did something with it and, it, and he made more. Five bags seems like a lot. The servant with two bags of silver also went to work and earned 
two more. They doubled the gifts that they had. They doubled what they had while the master was away. They didn't just hide it in the earth. They went and did something with it. Could they have lost it? <coughs> yes, they could have. Could they have could they have gotten just a little bit more or ended up with the same? Yes, they could have, but they didn't. They expanded and worked and they strived to do something that would bring more more honor and more glory to the master when he returns. And the Bible says, but the servant who received the one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. What kind of gifts, what kind of talents, what kind of treasures has God bestowed upon you? And what are you doing with them? What are you doing with the talents that God has for you? What are you doing with the treasures he's given you? What are you doing with the, 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 the understanding that ministry is for everyone? And how are you utilizing it? See, this person, he hid it. And he was being complacent. He was satisfied. Unaware of the dangers he was actually putting himself into. See this ideal of this smug self-satisfaction going, yeah, but no, I'm not failing at it. I'm not losing it. I'm not doing anything wrong with it. I'm doing nothing with it. And when Jesus returns, I'm going to be able to just give it back to him and say, hey, what you gave me, I held on to. Here it is. Complacency. Unaware of the destruction that is ahead. The Bible says, After a long time their master returned from his trip and called them to give an account of how they used his money. Talents. Gifts. Treasures. God has given it to all of us. And one day Jesus is going to return... And when he returns, we're going to give an account to him of all that we did or did not do in the name of God. And we're going to know that one day if we've been complacent in our life of self-satisfaction of doing nothing. So that way we're not rejected. We don't lose it. We don't get in trouble from it. We don't get ridiculed for it. We don't get laughed at for it. The Bible says the servant to whom he had entrusted the five bags, entrusted. That's an important word for us today because he's entrusted you. He's entrusted me. You know, when I think about sermons and I think about this and me being online today but not in person and somebody else is there that I could have very easily said, let's just not even do the online, but I feel like I'm entrusted to speak the gospel message to our church and to this generation, to, to know that you have gifts and talents and you have purpose and God has a plan for your life and we've been entrusted with these gifts and these talents and these treasures. And, and he says these words, he, he entrusted the five bags and he, and he came forward with five more and said, Master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest and I have earned five more. He expanded it. He worked on it. He invested See, Evan, he invests time in playing the guitar. He invests time in singing. He invests time in, in finding the right songs to go with the sermon. I, I invest time. I invest my talents. I invest my mind. I invest my spirit in, in reading the Bible and, and presenting what God has called me to do and to try to continually get better and better week after week after week and say, I got to keep staying moving forward because God's going to 
going to come back and he's going to say, I'm going to I'm going to look at Chad one day and I'm going to look him in the face and say, hey, I gave you the the gift, the the responsibility, the calling to be a pastor. I, I called you to preach the good news. How did you use that? I gave you money. I gave you a job, the money that you have. What did you do? How did you invest in the kingdom of God? How did you do that? The, the talents that you have in your life, how did you hone them? How did you sharpen them? How did you make them even better? How did you grow them? This first one had five. That's a lot. <coughs> ended up giving back 10. The Bible goes on and says the master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. The one that had won thought the one with five had a lot. But to the master when he returned, the five was just a small amount. And he says, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. So now I give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. Responsibility. See, I want you to see that it's not just about money like we see money Though it does involve money, I want you to see the talents God has given you. I want you to see the calling God has on your life. I want you to see the purpose and the plan God has given you. And you may say it's too small. It's too small. Look, Chad's up there preaching every week. He does all these things. Evan is such a good singer and Evan does all these things. I could never do all those things. So God has given them so much. And the Bible says the master returns and goes, yeah, Evan, that small amount that I gave you, that, uh, that small ability to sing, that small ability to play the guitar, that, that small ability to work on it, I, I gave you that small amount, but you were responsible with it, Evan. You were responsible with it, and then you grew it, and you kept getting better and better and utilizing it for the kingdom of God, and because of that, because you did that, well done, Chad, that, that small amount, that ability to preach, to study the word and to, to share the good news with other people, that small amount that I gave you, I, I saw how you kept trying to get it better and, and grow it and, and live the life out loud for others to see. That small amount, well done, because now I see that I can give you more responsibility. And then he says, let's celebrate. You know the master is going to return. Do you realize that one day Jesus Christ is going to return? Do you realize that that day is coming and when it comes we're going to be found either being celebrated or we're going to be found being complacent? And the Bible says the servant who had received the two bags came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest and I have earned two more. He doubled the, the amount of money, the talents, the treasures, the gifts and the master said well done my good and faithful servant you have been faithful in handling this small amount you have been faithful in handling it how you walked with it how you talked with it how you worked with it how you utilized it how you wanted to bring more people and more expansion of the kingdom of God you wanted to make it bigger you didn't want to just keep it there it wasn't about us four and no more it was about me going out and thriving and striving to reach more and more and more he said, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's go celebrate together, the Bible says. He was so excited. Then the servant with one bag of silver came and said, Master, 
I knew you were a harsh man. Harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look, here is your money back. But the master replied, You wicked and lazy servant. If you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. Then he ordered, Take the money from this servant and give it to the one with ten bags of silver. To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Here's the scary reality. Is that for many of us, we've become complacent in our walk with God and we're not living out the gifts and the talents and the treasures to the fullest of the, the kingdom of God. We're not utilizing our talents for God. We're not use, utilizing our gifts from God. We're not utilizing our money for the kingdom of God. We're, we're just become complacent. The Bible says that when the master returns, he's going to take away those who have been lazy, doing nothing for the kingdom of God, the talent they did have, the treasure they did have, the gift they did have. He's going to take it away from them and he's going to give it to the ones who have done something, who continue to strive forward to, to increase it. So when the kingdom comes and Jesus comes, the master returns. He will look at you and say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in this small thing that I gave to you and you have increased it. And now I want to give you even more responsibility. For those that are lazy, doing nothing. Even what little they have will be taken away. And the Bible says, Now throw this useless servant into outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You know, I said early on about complacency, and I read this verse over and over again, and I see this come up. I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look, look, here's your money. Complacency, self-satisfaction, especially when accompanied by unawareness of actual dangers. Now throw this useless servant into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus is going to return one day. and He's going to ask you, what did you do with the gifts I gave you? What did you do with the talents I gave you? What did you do with the treasures I gave you? He's either going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Let's celebrate. Or he's going to say, throw them into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Complacency and Christianity do not combine and they are not ever meant to be together. Right now, for anyone who has been complacent in their walk with God, in whatever area that you feel like is coming up in your life, I want you to ask the question, 
will I need the Lord and will I accept the Lord in my life? And maybe for you, you've never accepted Jesus Christ into your life and you wonder what is this going to mean for you? Everyone that says, Lord, Lord, will not enter into the kingdom of God. It's those who have faith in Jesus Christ and accept Him as Lord and Savior. And, and we understand that every single man and woman, boy and girl, has fallen short of the glory of God and they're in need of a Savior. And that Christ tasted death for every single one of us. And, and when you accept Him into your, into your heart, then all of a sudden you start realizing the treasures and the gifts and the talent and, and the giving of the Holy Spirit is to move you towards doing something for the kingdom of God to see that that he has gone but he's going to return and the understanding is is that I don't want to sit there and have him come back and have this look on my face of self-assurance because the only assurance I have is to use what God has given me and I need him so as this song is played and you prepare for the discipleship call today I pray that you accept that need of God. And if you have never accepted Jesus Christ, you will do that in this very moment. And if you're not utilizing the gifts, the talents, and the treasures for God, you will pray right now about that very thing. Lord, I come I confess Bowing here I find my rest Without you I fall apart You're the one That guides my heart Lord, I need you Oh, I need you
how I need you. I need him more now than ever. Here's the discipleship call for you this week. What area or areas of your Christian walk are you being complacent? How you are or are, how are you or are you not utilizing your gifts and talents for the Lord? So I want you to evaluate. I originally had to evaluate there and I changed it, but I want you to see how are you utilizing or how are you not utilizing the gifts and the talents that you have been given for the Lord? What areas of your Christian walk are you being complacent? You got to identify those because one day Jesus is going to return. I want you to know that Matthew chapter 25 verses 21 and 23, I want you to read them every day. Every day, multiple times, if you will. Well done. You're going to hear that? That's what you're after. My good and faithful servant. That's what I'm after. Go after it. Go get it. Because one day he's going to return. Don't let him come finding you being complacent. Lord, I pray that the blessings upon our lives would be to go after you and to live our life sold out to you 100%. Lord, I pray that we understand how much we need you. And Lord, may we all know that I say it every week. I say it all the time. You have a purpose and a plan for our life, and it's true. And Lord, you have given us the gifts. You have entrusted us to do something with it. Lord, I pray that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, may you take this moment as we get off of here to again embrace the reality of what this is for you today. What areas of your Christian walk are you being complacent? And evaluate how you are or are not utilizing your gifts and talents for the Lord. May God bless you. And I will catch you Wednesday evening for more of Psalm chapter 119.